Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex P. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to a Beantown Friday edition of the Ice Guys, Friday, April 12th, presented by Boston Hemp, Inc. Ian Cameron with you. Just yours truly today. Alex will be back tomorrow. Uh, we should be having Jimmy Murphy as well joining us, dropping in a little bit later in the show as well. So uh, Friday games, five of them on tap tonight for this Friday NHL slate. We are now inside the final week of the regular season, uh, just inside the final week, home stretch, uh, the playoff race is exciting. There's still division races uh, that are up for grabs right now. So it's definitely that very exciting time uh, of the NHL season, no question. So uh, looking forward to it. Uh, we will recap Thursday, first of all, before we get into the uh, Friday games. And, um, you know, we'll start with the Buffalo Sabres. We told you uh, yesterday on the show it was – not a given Washington would win that game. They're not playing great hockey. The only win they had in their last several was against Detroit in a game that Lindgren stole it, basically, for the Capitals. They got outplayed, but Detroit could not solve Charlie Lindgren. And so even their one win was not that impressive. And Buffalo was playing their final home game last night, so figured that would stoke um a reasonable effort from the Sabres, and it sure did. They ended up getting the 4-2 victory over Washington last night. Of course, the frustrations for the Capitals kind of spill over uh, late in that game with the uh, ruckus that broke out uh, toward the end, Wilson and Greenway, and a surprising scrap at the end of the game from Max Pacioretty and Tage Thompson, uh, which tells you all you need to know about just how um, frustrated the Capitals were about losing that game. Uh, to the um, Buffalo Sabres last night. A very damaging loss for Washington. Now, they're not out of it, but boy, you know, they could have at least maintained a wild card spot with a win last night, but uh, that was not the case, losing to Buffalo 4-2. Uh, the Florida Panthers, a 4 nothing shutout win uh, against the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, in that one. Um, we talked about yesterday. I thought maybe Columbus could do something offensively, but not the case. Florida just... Solid, impressive, workmanlike effort, and Sergei Bobrovsky with the shutout. And by the way, congratulations to Occupancy, our very own, uh, who's a fan of the show and in our chat most days. Uh, he had a piece of Bobrovsky shutout, plus 515. So very uh, solid uh, wager there and win for him with that. Um, the Philadelphia Flyers, you would have told me, and someone that was just so frustrated and perplexed that that game stayed under that Philly was going to score four in that game. Surely the Rangers would get more than one and the game would go over the total, but that did not happen. Um, Rangers just did not play well. Credit to the Flyers. Um, finally, um, they stopped the bleeding, a better effort last night against the Rangers. And that was just a, a matter of a team that had more physically in the tank, emotionally in the tank. They were way more emotionally invested in that game last night than the Rangers. You could tell by the way that game went. Uh, and the Flyers, by virtue of that win, just when we're looking to think that they're fading out of it and uh, not going to be a factor anymore in the playoff race, and all of a sudden they get a big win like that, and they're still right there. Now the problem for Philadelphia is they have one fewer game remaining than everybody else, and, and that's going to be the tough part, I think, for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers moving forward is that they just don't have many uh, games remaining now two compared to everybody else around them, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Washington, Islanders, all those teams still have three games left. So that's going to be the challenging part for the Flyers. They've only got two games remaining, and they're going to have to make the most of them here uh, down the stretch. But um, nevertheless, they can't even entertain the possibility of the postseason without winning last night in New York against the Rangers. So give them credit for responding uh, and answering the bell there with a 4-1 win. But again, they caught the Rangers on a bad night. Rangers did not play well. I, again, I don't want to take all the credit away from the Flyers. They did play a much better game, but Rangers did not play well. Game of the night for sure in terms of importance, and it kind of lived up to it in terms of the way the game was. Detroit and Pittsburgh, outstanding back and forth. 2-2 after the first period, high-scoring affair. Both goalies, I'm telling you what, Alex Lyon, Alex Nedeljkovic, they look like two goalies running on fumes. 
guys that have played a lot of hockey this season, especially of late. Uh, and you could tell neither one was all that sharp, letting in shots that you know they could see. There was no screen and clean shots beating them multiple times. Um, and it was just a matter of which goalie was going to let in the last shot. Uh, and unfortunately for the Detroit Red Wings, it was uh, Alex Lyon, uh, courtesy of Eric Carlson. What a night again for Sidney Crosby. He gets a goal. He gets three points. He gets the game-winning assist uh, on the Eric Carlson overtime winner, literally uh, dragging his team potentially into the playoffs. And with that win, Pittsburgh now does have the second wild card spot. But again, this is far from over. There are still you know, s- multiple games left in the regular season for all these teams. But as of right now, Pittsburgh occupies the second wild card in the East with 86 points. Washington, Detroit, and Philadelphia are all on the outside looking in, but they're all only one point behind Pittsburgh uh, for that second wild card spot. So this thing is far from over. There's lots to be decided uh, between um, now and Thursday uh, and another big win and another just outstanding performance from uh, Sidney Crosby in a Penguin victory last night, 6-5 to five, uh, over the Detroit Red Wings. I can't say enough, too, how big it was for Detroit to at least come back and get a point out of that game and force it to overtime. Because if they had lost in regulation when they were down 5-3, if they had not come back and even that game at 5, uh, then it would have been a much taller order for them to try to make the playoffs. So for them to come back and get the one point is significant. And by the way, even in a losing effort, a uh, great game from Lucas Raymond, who, of course, gets the uh, hat trick last night uh, for the uh, Detroit Red Wings uh, in that game, albeit an overtime loss. Um, what else did we see last night as we continue the recap? 3-2 for Ottawa. This was a, I guess it was all, well, the only thing that didn't cash for me was the full game over. I had the first period over that hit, and I had Ottawa money line, and I had Ottawa team total over. So it actually ended up being a profitable result this game. Senators with a 3-2 win in a shootout. Uh, over the Tampa Bay Lightning last night in that game. Um, Again, I thought Ottawa was live without Vasilevsky for Tampa Bay. The Lightning really can't move up in the standings nor move down, so you wondered just where the incentive was going to come from for them uh, in that game, and uh, credit to Ottawa. Uh, They get a nice 3-2 win in the shootout, and like I said, we cashed the uh, Senators' money line, Senators' team total over split, and the first period over all hitting in that game. The only thing that fell short was the over 6.5. Speaking of overs that did not fall short, New Jersey and Toronto, my goodness, this game was just nuts. 3-2 New Jersey after the first period. Goals left and right. Defense non-existent, really on either side uh, in that Devils-Leafs game. Uh, Not a good night for Samsonov for as well as he's played since the All-Star break. That was a forgettable night for him. A couple of those were just soft goals. He should have had them. Although, one of the worst turnovers you will ever see a defenseman commit was what we saw to Mark Giordano in the first period. Basically put the puck right on the stick of Nolan Foots. Like, here you go. Here's a great assist right in front of our own goaltender. Here you go, score, please. That's that's how bad it was. Oh, and you could tell Mark Giordano knew it right away. He knew right away what a bad giveaway that was. Uh, you didn't have to tell him shit. He knew he fucked up big time. Uh, and that was the kind of night it was. It was just a horrible defensive game. And it was just a matter of who was going to get the last goal. New Jersey did with about a minute and change left. 6-5 Devils in that game. That was a good game for me overall, though. We had the uh, over by Fecta. We had uh, Toronto team total over. And I love these type of situations where the team total still hits, even though the team does not win the game. And that's exactly what happened. We didn't touch Leafs money line or regulation or anything like that. We went with uh, team total over three and a half for Toronto, never in doubt. Uh, And we almost... Almost got both ends of the Austin Matthews goal props last night. We cashed over one and a half goals, plus 460. For a while there, the hat trick was live at 23 to one, plus 2300. But, and he had some chances to get that hat trick, but uh, not meant to be. He ends up with two goals, but two very important goals for Austin Matthews uh, in the chase for 70. He's now only two goals away, 68 goals, just needs two goals in three remaining games. Uh, in order to hit that 70 goal mark. So it is definitely something that is well within reach here for uh, Austin Matthews in the final few games of the season. Uh, the New York Islanders, classic Islander type of game. They uh, not don't make it easy on themselves against a lesser team, but credit to Montreal. They have not packed it in 
or mailed it in down the stretch. They played hard for Marty St. Louis, and they did once again last night. We were all over the draw in that game. Uh, we talked about it, and a great price. That draw was plus 390. Plus 390 last night for that uh, Canadians Islanders draw. So uh, great to see that hit last night. Uh, draw Island, the Thailanders once again come through for us with that. Uh, and the Islanders um, find a way to get a win. And that's all that matters. They got two very important points. And now they really put themselves in a very good spot, a very good position. 89 points, third place in the Metro. They are three points clear of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And four points clear of that trio of teams that could knock them out of the playoffs, Washington, Detroit, and Philadelphia. So that was a gigantic two points picked up by the Islanders. They take one huge step closer to clinching a playoff spot. And now that win puts them in a spot where tomorrow against the Rangers, there are playoff clinching scenarios that are there for the Islanders. If they win and they get some help from uh, uh, other teams later in the day, they, they could be uh, clinching and punching their ticket to the playoffs uh, as early as tomorrow. So that is how huge that win was uh, for the Islanders last night, getting that 3-2 win against the uh, Canadians. Laurent Brossois, man, this guy has been just terrific in a backup role. This is now, I believe, the third shutout that he has had in the last month or so. Uh, they, he goes in, the Jets go in to Dallas against the Red Hot Stars, and they beat the Stars 3-0, shutting them out in Dallas. Extremely impressive. A great road game from the Jets. I thought their team defense in that game was absolutely outstanding. So uh, in this situation, uh, Winnipeg was great. A huge two points because now they are tied with Colorado going into that big showdown with the Jets and the Avs in Denver tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock for second place in the Central, which is also home ice advantage in the first round. So it's a huge, huge game tomorrow now for Winnipeg at Colorado uh, and the two teams that are likely playing each other in the first round as well. So can't wait to see that. Uh, and again, uh, another great performance by the uh, Jets and uh, Rick Bonus uh, back to Dallas and gets the victory with the uh, Winnipeg Jets in that game. And I keep saying it about Laurent Brossois. Let's say something happens to Connor Hellebuck uh, in the um, playoffs as far as an injury is concerned, I'm telling you right now, they won't skip a beat. They really won't without um, uh, Laurent Brossois. He's very capable. Remember how well he played for Vegas last year in the playoffs before he got injured and Aiden Hill had to take over. So this guy, you know, is a very, very capable netminder for the uh, Winnipeg Jets. And he is showing you that right now uh, with the way he is playing uh, in between the pipes. So again, good stuff indeed from uh, Laurent Brossois once again last night for the Jets. And then the two late games, 3-1 San Jose against Seattle. Devin Cooley, over 40 saves to preserve the victory for the uh, San Jose Sharks. So uh, you got to give him a lot of 49 saves he had uh, in that victory for the uh, San Jose Sharks, uh, denying me the over. Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes, but uh, credit to him. He had an incredible game. Uh, Seattle did everything but score in the third period. As far as shots on goal, they had a 16-7 to edge in the third period. They outshot San Jose 30-12 to in the final two periods, but it was a it was a heck of a game from Devin Cooley. Got to give him credit for that. And uh, San Jose with a 3-1 win. Um, and I did warn you, don't lay a price like that with Seattle right now. And the uh, final game, L.A., you know, I like them in that spot to, you know, stop messing around, clinch the playoff spot, bounce back from the loss against Anaheim, and they did just that. 4-1 win against the Calgary Flames. We cash the uh, Kings in regulation. Kings first period puck line as well, plus 152. That also came in. Uh, that was also Matt Robinson's best bet on the show yesterday, by the way, Kings and regulation. So good to see the Kings uh, bounce back strong. Uh, they jumped out to the lead in the first period, played a really sound game in their own zone defensively. Talbot solid in net uh, and a 4-1 uh, win for the L.A. Kings last night uh, against the uh, Calgary Flames uh, in that one. Uh, all right, before we get into the Friday games, I do have to make note of the fact that isn't it amazing how today we just or we find out uh, of course, just uh, a few moments ago about um, Mark Stone um, all of a sudden cleared to practice for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. What timing, right? You could, I couldn't have predicted the timing of Mark Stone being able to get back onto the ice 
and skate again for his Vegas Golden Knights, I could never in a million years have imagined the timing of that return would be one week out from the playoffs. I could never in a million years project that to be the case or think that was coming. It's uh, a little bit of a April miracle here. Uh, Mark Stone, you know, with this lacerated spleen, very, very tough injury to come back from. And that's what uh, Kelly McCrimmon and everyone in the management team for Vegas would have you were telling you left and right that all of a sudden it just so happens that his ability to finally hit the ice again and skate again and be back at practice is basically a week away from the playoffs. It's just amazing. It's absolutely incredible how that timing just happened that way. Uh, no doubt. Uh, no, look, I mean, in all seriousness, Vegas is able to do this with the, with the cap, circumvent it, do this LTIR stuff. It's up to the NHL to change it, to stop this from happening in the future. I mean, you could be mad and you could say, you know, this is not the way to properly uh, do things if you're Vegas. But if they have the ability to do it, you know, they should take advantage of it, honestly. And they are. It's up to the NHL to step in and say, okay, this is enough of the horse shit. It's time to put an end to this uh, loophole, plug it up so that this can't happen again. Really is that it really is that simple. So, um, you know, at the, at this point in time, um, you know, I don't I say don't be mad at Vegas. Don't be mad at George McPhee. Don't be mad at Kelly McCrimmon. OK, don't be mad at those guys. I'm not mad at those guys. I'm not mad at the team. I'm not. They're doing what they should do. You can take advantage of this. You can find ways. They're trying to win a Stanley Cup. That's why they're doing all this. That's why they did it last year. That's why they've done it uh, in the past. They're trying to win a Stanley Cup. And all this stuff with the LTIR and the salary cap helps them win a Stanley Cup. There's no question because now they could get a Tomas Hurdle and a Hannafin and re-sign Hannafin. And now all of a sudden, here's Mark Stone maybe ready to come back for the playoffs. Don't be mad at Vegas for doing it. Be mad at the NHL for allowing it. Okay, that that's what you have to be upset about. If for all for all the people that are trying all the other teams, especially the Western teams that are pissed off with Vegas getting away with this. Yeah. The, you know, let, let be mad with the NHL. Don't be mad with the Vegas Golden Knights uh, for this. And that's the way I see it. I'm not, I don't begrudge them for doing that. I don't, they have the uh, ability to do it and it's helping them. It's given them probably a better team and a better chance uh, to win in the Stanley cup playoffs. And they've got the ability to do it. So you know, and they're taking advantage of it. Like I say, be mad at the NHL for not fixing it. And I do want to say one thing too, but from yesterday, I do want to touch on the frozen four, um, huge win by Denver, a little bit of an upset there against Boston. U. look, this is what Denver was. Denver was going to try to clog things up in the neutral zone against Macklin Celebrini and all the skill of Boston. And it worked, it, it worked. And all it took was just one bounce and one, opportunity for Denver to steal that game. And they did, I shouldn't say steal it. They, they were, they, they were uh, even with Boston. It's not like Boston outplayed them. It was a pretty close, pretty evenly matched game, but they basically played the way you have to play against a team like that with the skill like that they had to beat them. And they did, they clogged things up. They made it tough to generate uh, plays and speed through the neutral zone and credit to the Denver pioneers. Absolutely outstanding uh, job. Uh, with the uh, victory. Yeah, I know, Rich H., those games didn't even come close to the overs. And I, I guess I should have been a little more careful because, you know, we are in the semifinals. These games are more important and you're seeing, you know, a little bit tighter, a little more conservative style of play. And plus the goaltenders, look, I've, I've played very well uh, on for, for some of these teams. Jacob Fowler was outstanding in the Boston College win. Michigan had their chances, but Jacob Fowler was outstanding in net. Um, Boston College broke that thing open in the second period. They went on to a 4 nothing win uh, over Michigan. And so that sets up a Denver-Boston College national championship game uh, in the Frozen Four on Saturday. So looking forward to that. You got that high-powered, potent offense of Boston College. And Denver's going to try to beat Boston College the way they beat Boston University. You know, clog it up in the neutral zone, make it very difficult. So we'll see how that one goes, but it's a very, very fascinating uh, game coming up tomorrow with the Denver Pioneers and Boston. I got to, I've still got to side with Boston College. I think they're the best team. They're the number one overall seed in this tournament. I think they'll win, but I'm telling you what, that's a scary brand of hockey that Denver can play. 
when they can shut you down like that and maybe make things a little difficult here on Boston College. You know what? I'd be tempted by you can get a nice cheap plus one and a half, minus 115 with Denver on the puck line. I think they're good enough to make that a one goal game against Boston College uh, and make that a tough game on them. Um, and plus their ability to just shut you down uh, and shut teams down. You know, they were able to uh, yesterday against Boston U. So it's a great championship game. Denver Pioneers, Boston College, looking forward to that uh, coming up uh, tomorrow uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota. All right, let's get to the Friday night NHL action. We will begin with Carolina, St. Louis. Hurricanes minus 200 road favorites, six the total uh, here in this one. This is a game where there's actually something to play for on both sides. Carolina, especially with the Rangers loss last night to the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, the door is open for them. Uh, for first in the Metro Division. So there's a real possibility now for this Carolina team that, you know, they could track down the Rangers. They're still three points back, and all of a sudden they win tonight. They're one point back uh, of this Rangers team. Uh, so there's definitely something to play for there. St. Louis, meanwhile, somehow because of the Vegas Golden Knights' recent struggles and stumbles, St. Louis has kept themselves alive in the playoff race, albeit barely it's one of these deals where they probably have to win out and Vegas is going to have to lose almost every remaining game in order to get in uh, here in this game. But um, the fact remains, they take the ice here, you know, still alive, you know, mathematically. Uh, so, and of course they're going to need to win here uh, in order to keep those playoff hopes alive. Because if they don't, that means uh, Vegas can clinch with a win tonight uh, against the uh, Minnesota uh, wild in that game. So we'll see how this one uh, plays out. Uh, for St. Louis, you do have some injuries on the blue line. Krug and Falk uh, look like they're going to miss this game. Uh, and yes, just to confirm, for St. Louis, uh, it's going to take a combination of Vegas winning in regulation against Minnesota and St. Louis losing to Carolina for St. Louis to be eliminated and for Vegas to clinch. So those two things would both have to happen here uh, going into this game. Um, Frederick Anderson confirmed in net here for the... Um, yeah, Frederick Anderson confirmed in net for Carolina. Jordan Bennington uh, in goal tonight for the um, St. Louis Blues. St. Louis has been excellent as a home underdog. Okay, excellent. And we've seen them pull upsets as home underdogs uh, over the last few months, especially since Drew Bannister took over from the fired Craig Berube and, uh, at, at, behind the benches. Uh, behind the bench. But I'm telling you what, I don't want to step in front of Carolina. They've got a little door open now. Uh, to try to win the division and take it from the Rangers. The Rangers stumbling uh, each of the last two nights, by the way, the Rangers stumbling against the uh, Islanders and the Flyers. So I like the draw here. I'm going to take a chance with the draw. At a nice plus price, these two teams played earlier this season in Raleigh. It went past regulation. Carolina doesn't care if St. Louis gets a point. St. Louis doesn't care if Carolina gets a point. I can see this being a close competitive game, especially Carolina on the road now. You know, after a couple of convincing wins against bottom feeders, St. Louis has played this team tough in the past. So I like the draw here. Take a shot with that. I'm also going to grab over five and a half minus 116. And I know Carolina can shut teams down. I get it. But I think there's some still some regression on the way for Frederick Anderson. I don't think he's going to have this save percentage and this kind of a goals against average uh, moving forward as far as um, it, what he's done since returning from injury. St. Louis has been a capable offensive team on home ice, but with the blue line injuries to St. Louis, and I've said this for years on this show, you see multiple key defensemen out like Justin Falk, like Tory Krug, it suddenly points to a weaker blue line, usually leads to more of a more blunders defensively, more turnovers and more breakdowns. And it's usually good news for overs. So you're going to give me a nice, reasonable five and a half at a couple of books. Bet online as over five and a half minus one sixteen. I'm going to take that. So draw and over five and a half for me here with the uh, Hurricanes and the uh, Blues tonight. As far as uh, props go uh, in this game, you know, focus mostly. Gensel's been we talk about it excellent since he's been with the uh, Hurricanes, no question. Three points uh, against Washington. He had a goal against Boston, uh, an assist against um, Columbus. Uh, as well. Uh, he's on a six game point streak. He's had multi points in three of the six games. So the over one and a half point shot is not bad here for Gensel the way he is going right now for them. He's been absolutely terrific. Uh, Seth Jarvis 
you know, the goal props have been good. He had six shots on goal against Boston, and he did score in that game. Uh, so that's probably worth a look there as well. Right now, you know, Jordan Cairo, probably your number. And Zach Bull Duke, I'm going to throw him in there too. Uh, Jordan Cairo, though, especially with Jake Neighbors out, he has really stepped up. Four goals and seven points in the last four games for Jordan Cairo. And then Zach Bull Duke, all of a sudden, games, goals and back to back games for him. Uh, for the uh, St. Louis Blues. So uh, very, very impressive. Yeah, I don't mind um, Braden Shen either, as Terry in the chat says. But uh, specifically, I think there's great value on both. Uh, well, not so much Kairu, but especially Zach Bolduc, who now has goals in back-to-back -back games here for St. Louis. All right, next up, we've got Nashville and Chicago. Uh, the Predators minus 260, uh, road favorites. Six the total here uh, in this one, uh, shaded to the over. Um, this is another one where I bet over, but I bet uh, five and a half minus one thirty, and that was this morning. We've seen this total shift, and some money's come in on the over because this was under six minus one twenty, and now we're seeing it shaded to the over, you know, minus one fifteen in some spots. So you can no longer get the five and a halfs; so they're no longer there. You got to get take six now. Uh, I'd grab five and a half minus one thirty. Like I said this morning uh, on this Predators Blackhawks over, I still like it at over six. I would probably throw in, add in a first period over by Facta as well. We have Arvid Soderbloom and Net. You know what my feelings are with him and as Alex as well. We don't trust him uh, in between the pipes at all for this Blackhawks team. Uh, Nashville should be able to score goals. Uh, last time, by the way, Nashville played in Chicago. It was a 4 3 final score. Seven goals went over the total. So I think Nashville score. I think Chicago, though, at home more likely to chip in and help us out than maybe they were. The Although they did get two goals against St. Louis the other night. We were on the over by Fecta with the uh, Blues and the Blackhawks uh, on Wednesday night as well. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's definitely over by Fecta here in this game. Kevin Lankinen, by the way, is going to get the start in net for Nashville. In fact, uh, and I, I'd probably tack on a team total over three and a half for the Predators as well because I see it's minus 115, very, very reasonable price. But Kevin Lankinen is in net here for the uh, Chicago, for the Nashville Predators, former member of the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. We'll see how he fares. He's kind of a feast or famine goalie. Uh, we've seen him give up six goals to Colorado, get lit up. And then he came back against the Islanders. He only gave up a goal in that game. He also had a shutout win against Florida. You know, So he's been all over the map as far as his uh, play has been. Uh, in between the pipes, he is going up against Chicago. So maybe that's an incentive. You know, you always want to beat your old team. Uh, maybe he'll play well tonight, but still think Chicago on home ice can chip in a little bit as far as offense goes. So yeah, Nashville team total over three and a half over by Fecta. Uh, the primary looks here for me with this game tonight. And then as far as on the prop side of things, um, Kurashev, you know, definitely for Chicago. If you're going to look at anybody as far as props go, Kurashev's been uh, really, really good playing with uh, Bedard. Uh, he's now four point, uh, five points in the last five games for the Blackhawks. Got one of the goals against uh, St. Louis the other night. Uh, and then for Nashville, you know, we're going to just regurgitate things we've said for basically weeks, if not months. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Yossi, for that matter, have to be your starting points. It's pretty amazing how much the offense is rolling through those three guys that they have. They're in on so many of the goals right now for the uh, Nashville Predators uh, at this point in time. I mean, Yossi is having just a terrific season. I don't think people are talking enough about how good he's been. He's got 80 points now. He had two points against Winnipeg. Uh, he's just been absolutely marvelous this season uh, for the Nashville Predators. So uh, again, we'll see if he can keep it rolling with the, uh, production here tonight against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. You'd think given the opponent and given that it's Arvid Soderblom in that, you know, there's going to be a solid opportunity here for uh, Nashville to keep piling up the uh, uh, production here. And then I'll throw one out on the uh, second line here too. Mark Jankowski has been a little bit of a under the radar uh, score at times for the uh, Nashville Predators, no question. So he might have uh, a little bit of value. You know, what's also been good too is um, Novak and Evangelista have developed a little chemistry, so they can chip in. But mostly it's been Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist, Yossi from the blue line. I mean, that quartet has really powered Nashville through to this position where they are now comfortably uh, a playoff team right now. All right, next up, we continue along. It is Arizona, Edmonton, uh, Oilers minus 280, home favorites, six and a half the total in this game. Uh, Arizona, I give them credit. 
for beating Vancouver for two reasons. You know, they've got this Salt Lake City relocation story swirling around that can't be easy to focus on hockey and not only focus on hockey, but play well, you know, when that's going on. Uh, and then I think when you look at also the um, opponent they were playing, Vancouver, the other night, you know, Vancouver is trying to fend off Edmonton for first in the Pacific Division, something that they're finding is not very easy for them to do. And yet they were able to go into Vancouver and get a 4-3 overtime win uh, against the Vancouver Canucks. So, you know, I was very, very impressed with what I saw from uh, the Coyotes there in that game. Uh, we'll see if they can uh, keep the ball rolling here uh, in this matchup tonight against the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Now, this is an interesting spot tonight for Edmonton because tomorrow they play Vancouver. It's going to be a pretty important game. Might It will go a long way to decide first place in the Pacific Division. But for Edmonton to really make that game matter, you can't go into that game and lose this game uh, here tonight against the uh, Arizona Coyotes. You know, you've really got to put the pressure on Vancouver and make that game even more significant by taking care of business tonight uh, against the Arizona Coyotes. So, uh, again, we'll see if uh, Edmonton can do that. Uh, it was extreme. Even without Cart uh, Connor McDavid uh, in the lineup, and, and I don't think he's going to play. I think the smart bet is that he's going to play tomorrow. They're going to save him for the Vancouver game. He won't play tonight. Yep, he's definitely not going to play tonight. But uh, And he says, we'll see about tomorrow. My guess is, especially if Edmonton wins tomorrow, tonight against Arizona, he'll be in tomorrow for that very important game uh, against the uh, Vancouver Canucks. So, But they can win without him. They've proven they've, they, they, they can do that against uh, Vegas the other night. It was as impressive a win as you'll see from any team. No McDavid, no problem. 5-1 uh, against the Vegas Golden Knights the other night. And yes, Arizona beat Vancouver, but they had to get a pretty damn good goaltending effort from Ingram. Um, and they, they, look, they found a way, but you know they were kind of going against the flow in that game. Vancouver was kind of carrying the play, and yet Arizona was able to uh, still win that game. Uh, this will be tougher tonight. If you look at the spot two for Arizona, this is going to be their fourth game on the road during this little uh, road trip they've been on. And for them, it's going to be their fourth game in six nights after being in San Jose, Seattle, uh, and Vancouver before this. And it's hard to ignore the fact that Edmonton, uh, over this Arizona team, has just absolutely dominated them. Uh, Edmonton's won seven straight meetings. Uh, between these two teams, seven straight wins over Arizona, and they have scored a minimum of four goals uh, in every head-to-head -head meeting uh, against Arizona. So I don't love the price, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Uh, over three and a half, minus 150 uh, with the team total for Edmonton. I'm on that Edmonton team total over three and a half, and I've split it with the full game over six and a half, minus 114. Uh, and that's another thing too, eight and two to the over. Uh, in the last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with these two teams. And you look at the last um, six meetings, 5-3, 6-1, 8-2, 4-3, 5-4, high-scoring affair after another. Arizona dragged Vancouver to an over. Vancouver's not been much of an over team lately, and even the Coyotes got an over out of the Vancouver Canucks the other night. So uh, I'm going to go with two plays here. Edmonton team total over 3.5, full game over 6.5 with the uh, Coyotes and the Oilers. And another reason why I like the full game, too, is, I don't know, Cal Pickard's been good. He's played way better than anyone had any reasonable expectations to, to, to expect from him. Uh, and credit to Calvin Pickard for that, who's going to be in net tonight for the Oilers. But there's part of me that thinks he's going to level off just a little bit. I could see Arizona with that great forward group. And look, Arizona is one of those teams. They've got a lot of work to do with their goaltending and their defense. Okay, they've, they've still got to improve that quite a bit. But you can't deny the forward group right now and how much skill and talent and ability and upside and how, how good these kids might be in the long run, like a Logan Cooley and a Dylan Gunther. And Josh Jones now joined the mix. And what about Matias Michelli? Uh, and um, they're just only going to get better. Michael Carcone. I mean, they've got a lot of blue chip, very exciting players, especially in the forward group. Again, they do have to work on the defensive depth and the goaltending. So I think against Pickard, they could, they, they could still get a, a couple of goals here. And they have been able to score at times against Edmonton in the past. So that's why I'm going to tack on that full game over in addition uh, to the Oiler team total. 
Uh, Jimmy Murphy is with us on this Friday. There he is. He's feeling a little under the weather, but he's here with us on this Beantown Friday, as he often is. Uh, Jimmy, before we even get to the NHL stuff, because I know you're into the Frozen Four, and you've been following it, of course, closely and watching it. Um, Denver denied us the all-Boston final. Uh, I thought we were going to get it, BC and BU. But uh, Denver, the fly in the ointment, if you will, uh, getting the job done in overtime. And BC, just too much for Michigan. They broke the game open in the second period. Um, the question was, is BC going to be able to play defensively good? We know they got the firepower, obviously. Will Smith, Ryan Leonard, Gabe Perot, Cutter Gauthier. It goes without saying what BC's got offensively. But can they get the job done defensively? And can their goaltender get the job done? And I'm telling you what, Jacob Fowler's officially on a heater right now for Boston College in net. This guy is playing better and better and better, and I thought he was great against Michigan. So we have a Denver Boston College National Championship game, Jimmy. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I know you watched the eye test, so I don't know why you were questioning if Fowler, the uh, Eagles, could get things done defensively. Fowler has been the best goalie in the nation uh, to this point, probably since the bean pot. Uh, he's been unreal. The Montreal Canadiens have to be sal and their fans have to be salivating right now uh, at the thought of him being between the pipes. They are so stacked in their goaltending depth department right now. Uh, and just wait till they add him. And, you know, you look at BC, just you're right. The way they can just turn it on. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you look at what they they had to do against, um, I'm going to draw on a blank. Oh, Quinnipiac, right? I thought that that game was exactly what BC needed headed into the Frozen Four because let's say they they just romp Quinnipiac and they get to the Frozen Four. They hadn't really faced that much adversity. They did a bit against Michigan Tech, but that was a real adversity that they faced there. And I think that prepared them even better for the moment of the Frozen Four, and they just took care of business. And, you know, they are so stacked when it comes to depth up front as well, and their penalty kill is amazing. Um, so... It's just an unbelievable story with the Boston College Eagles. I, I seriously, I would go on record right now, and I've, I've said it on Twitter. I'll say it right here again. I think there's some AHL teams that that Boston College team could beat when they're at their best. They are that good, that deep, that quick strike offense, as you mentioned there. So that was great. And as for BU Denver, Ian, I felt so bad. You know, I saw your tweet about what you were liking for the game. I know my, my over parlay dead both games really. Yeah. Dead. So I, well, I would have, I would have, I would have definitely had the over in the BC Michigan and I would have yeah. thought BC could just cover it themselves maybe. Yeah. Um, but as for Denver, I like, they are just the clamp down New Jersey devils of old neutral zone trap team with a, with a solid enough goalie to get it done. My the funny thing about that is they're supposed to be a high scoring team and they are, I, but I, I think know, they figured I know. Out we've got to play defense to beat these BCs and BUs. Exactly. And well, like you know, I, yeah. I noticed this back when they played uh, UMass at the Springfield regional and they did it again in the following game against Cornell. But when I was at that UMass game, I, I turned to Pierre Maguire, my coach, and I said, who the heck is this team? Because they just weren't attacking. They were just sort of like in this prevent mode. We're going to take your best shot. Give us your shots. Almost like Rocky and Rocky three with Clubber Lane. Come on. You ain't so bad. You ain't so bad. Just taking those shots and withhold it. And then boom, they strike when the iron's hot and, and they do it. They've done that every game. And this overtime run that they're There's on. There's no right doubt now. they're going to play that way against BC. Cause that's the only chance they, they're going to have to hang in. Yeah. Yeah. And they are on, like I said, on Twitter last night, they're on like a, uh, 1993 Canadians uh, overtime run here. I've never seen anything like it in the yeah. NCAA tournament, but uh, it should be a great game. I think it will be a little better game than what you saw between BC and Michigan. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to it there, but I, I don't know if you guys saw big news coming out of uh, Montreal Canadians land, speaking of prospects and Boston U <laughs> university uh, defenseman Lane Hudson from BU is signing his entry-level contract with the uh, Montreal Canadiens. I'm hearing that he will make his debut on Monday in Detroit against the Red Wings. I'm also hearing, as I just reported on Twitter, uh, that his teammate, uh, Luke Tuck, who is a, a senior now, played his last game. Alex's brother, by the way. Yes, that's Alex's brother, has played his last game of college hockey, and he too will uh, sign. They might even announce the signings together, because I know the Canadians haven't officially confirmed this yet, but... Freeman and our Elliot Freeman reported first that uh, that Hudson would sign. And I, I can tell you guys right now that Tuck is going to fall. So 
uh, some big things coming uh, in terms of the prospects department for the Montreal Canadiens. There you go. And we're going to probably see uh, both of them on the, uh, certainly Lane Hudson uh, against uh, Detroit uh, coming up. But then that's what the, I love about this time of year. The teams that get bounced from the frozen four and from the college hockey tournaments, they sign these kids and they try to get them in the lineup at the end of the regular season, those final few games. So uh, looking forward to that. And Lane Hudson, like we're talking about a guy that could be cornerstone blue liner mm -hmm. for the uh, Montreal Canadiens for a very a long time to come. So excited to see him for sure make his uh, NHL debut. All right, your final prediction here, Denver and Boston College tomorrow. Like to me, I, the only thing I'm thinking of is could, could, it, could Denver keep it to a one-goal game with the way they're defending right now? I'm maybe interested in a plus one and a half on Denver, minus 115. Yeah. That's kind of interesting to me, but I can't say don't, I love it, it because I just think BC's just the better team. They're the number one overall seed. Yeah. They've been the best team all year. They're the most depth, most firepower. And now they've got a goalie that, hey, you want to play defensive hockey and put zeros on the board and shut teams down? We've got a goalie that can do that and Fowler, if you're BC, to go with that firepower. So I just think it's BC's to lose. Yeah, and I mean, as I said, even in that Quinnipiac game, he, he's, he can be a great goalie when you're in a run-and-gun type game or he can be a great goalie when you're in a tight defensive game. No. He can play either role, you know, and, like, he adapts very well to the situation. So, look, I'm going to come right out of the gate here, and I know it's not an NHL game, but – Jimmy Puckline in this one. I, I like uh, BC five to two. Uh, the, the nice little run of uh, new uh, left wing locked nineties Devils hockey comes to an end here for the uh, yeah. Denver uh, Pioneers against the uh, Boston College Eagles. Yeah, I mean it just it seems like they're the best team. Uh, so I'm 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 talking in circles about plus one and a half, but I'm like, why step in front of Boston College? Why? No, they're freight train you night know. right now, my friend. They are yeah. so stacked. And yeah. and the thing is, right? So Will Smith was the guy, or Gabe Perot too. But I mean that line, it's like no matter what, one night one of those guys is going, and you're in yeah. trouble. You know, and then, oh, by the way, on their second line, they have a Hobie Baker finalist in Carter Gauthier, who is pretty much, I think, headed to Anaheim right after this game tomorrow night. Uh, and he's going to be a hell of a player in the NHL. I mean, Pierre Maguire continues to tell him and say he's a future 40 goal scorer at the NHL level. And he's such a power forward type too, a rare commodity that we see these days. So uh, they're just they're just so good. And then, oh, if you look in the bottom six, They've got guys like Malone who can step up with good, uh, big goals. And it, it's everywhere you look, they're going to get you. You know, if one guy's not having it, another guy's stepping up. So, and a credit to, you know, I know they're stacked and they've got all the skill in the world, but I think that uh, Greg Brown, their head coach, who got coach of the year in the Hockey East and nationally, uh, definitely deserves that because, you know, even when you have a stacked team, Ian, um, it's still hard to manage all that talent, Did right? Take over from a guy that had been there a very long time. I think so, right? Uh, coach. No, I think there's a guy in between. That's a good question. I don't know who was right before Greg, but I th are you thinking of um Jerry York? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let me, let me double check yeah. that because I I feel like there was somebody in between. You might be right. Um, I should know this too, and I apologize. That's not easy. You know, fill, you know, taking over. Oh, yeah. right. Jerry York I took over from, but Jerry York actually lives five minutes from where I am right now. Oh, wow. There we go. Yeah. 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 He, uh, he's a leg Watertown mass. I'm in Waltham mass. Um, let's see. Yes, you're absolutely right. He took over, uh, three years ago from Jerry York. Yeah. He was a legend, Jerry York. Coached my uh, coached my friend all the way back in 1980, uh, 1998, 99, 2000 seasons. Yeah. Uh, and he was he's a legend in the game. Was at Bowling Green before that. So, uh, yeah, unreal. Uh, Not these, easy. That's going to be like Gerard Mayo taking over for Bill Belichick here in uh, New England with the Patriots. Yeah, so. yeah. You know what's cool? If you watch uh, Greg Brown, too, like watch him like during a game when it's getting really heated or something, or maybe he – he get there's a penalty against BC where they they clearly got porked on a penalty, right? Yeah. He never changes his face. Yes. He never gets animated. He never even gets too high or too. He's the definition of even keeled. I've never, honestly, out of all the coaches I've worked with, covered in the NHL, I've never seen a guy as even keeled as Greg Brown, and that's got to be huge for a young bunch like the Boston College Eagles to have because it keeps their emotions in check as well. No doubt, and it's, it's why they were able to stay calm in all situations. Even when that game for a while was tight there, it was one nothing for quite a long time against Michigan. They yeah. never flinched, though. No panic. Uh, kept playing. 
uh, and eventually the uh, goal started to come and they broke through uh, against Barzowski there and the uh, Michigan goaltender. So uh, great job. And that should be a good uh, Frozen Four championship game. You know, it's kind of like Bruce Cassidy. He had to take over for Claude Julian in Boston. Mm -hmm. That was not easy. Claude Julian delivered the first Stanley Cup to Boston since the 70s. Yep. So that was not easy for Bruce Cassidy, and yet they had success. And same thing now with Greg Brown with uh, Boston College here, having success even though he had to take over for a legend uh, behind the uh, bench. All right. Um, we've talked about – press for time, so let's get right to it, Exactly. Right? Carolina, St. Louis. What do you think here, Jimmy, with this one? I'm going to Jimmy Puck line on this one too. And I'll even give you my bargain bin uh, from this game. I'm going to give you a little, uh, you're going to, you're going to love this one. Uh, oh, we'll save know. it for the segment. We'll save you're it. For sure? the segment. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want, I just want to get you out of here in time. So yeah, that's true. I have an appointment at three, it's at three forty, So we'll wrap up in five to 10 okay. minutes. Uh, Nashville, Chicago, Nashville minus two sixty, total six. Anything here? Pass. Nothing wrong with that. I'm on, uh, as I mentioned just a moment ago, Oilers team total over three and a half, full game over six and a half. They've scored four goals or more in seven straight against Arizona and eight and two to the over in the last 10 meetings. Uh, I like it. I like it. I'm going right here uh, in this game. I'm going with the Coyotes on the underdog, buddy. All right. Yep. Why the hell not? You know what? I'm going with Utah with the underdog here. Salt <laughs> Lake right. City. Good stuff indeed. All right, we got two games left. We got Minnesota and Vegas. Vegas minus 170 home favorites, uh, and the total here six shaded to the under in this game. Now, remember, they had the injuries, and they've been struggling Vegas, definitely no question, but the guys that didn't go on the trip with them to Western Canada, they all might play tonight. It's not confirmed, but Nick Waugh might be back. Chandler Stevenson might be back, although his was a personal absence because his wife uh -huh. was given birth. But he might be back. Waugh might be back. And Alex Petrangelo might be back, too. And, of course, we saw the video earlier, Mark Stone uh, back. What timing. Yeah. Incredible, the timing. Imagine that. Uh, but, nevertheless, um, Vegas getting healthy potentially tonight. And I just, you know, Minnesota – the writing's on the wall, right? Zuccarello is absent for who knows what personal reasons. Freddie Goudreau, personal reasons. The writing's on the wall. they got the tee times booked. You know, they're ready for the summer to begin. It's been a trying season. They had a coach fired. They're not making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think, look, Vegas is not in good form. That's what scares me, Jimmy. But to me, this is a Vegas spot. I think I'm looking at them in regulation here. Yeah, you mentioned they got their tee times. Or how about their personal reasons? They're sitting home or they're down in Augusta, Georgia or something uh, watching the Masters. That's probably what's going on there. I'm with you. Another, I'm doing. I'm all about the puck line today. Give me Vegas on the puck line. I know they haven't been trustworthy lately, but sooner or later, this team's got to get it together and really start to roll. And I'll tell you what, you can shit on them all you want for the way they played lately and even over the last month. That's going to be one hell of a dangerous eight seed if they go in as the eight seed. I don't want anything to do with the Vegas Golden Knights as an eight seed in the Western Conference. No doubt. I like that first period over too, says Terry in our chat. Uh six and oh in the last six games in Vegas with the Wild and the Golden Knights. And I remember the last time Minnesota was in Vegas. There was a ton of goals in the first period. I remember it. So yeah, I like that first. I don't like I don't love the full game over as much, but I like that first period over for yeah. sure with uh Minnesota and Vegas tonight, plus Vegas and regulation, maybe even a sprinkle on Vegas team total over as well. Uh, three and a half uh, in this one. Uh, and by the way, just for props in that game, I would say uh, for that one tonight, uh, there was one I think that uh, stood out to me for Vegas. Uh, yeah, it looks like Chandler Stevenson's definitely playing. We'll wait to see on Wah and Petrangelo. Uh, but, you know, back in the lineup after his wife's given birth, how many times have we talked about that angle where it's almost like there's that pep in your step? When, you know, you just became a dad, you're wow. feeling good, you're back in the lineup, though, playing hockey, just as a new dad. Watch Chandler Stevenson score tonight or have a good game. Uh, I'll jump game. on that. That's a great idea. I agree. It's happened before. Being, being a that. dad myself, I can relate. And I, I'll tell you, if I was an NHL, I probably would have scored a couple goals that night. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but, uh, you know, Nick, you're right. I mean, to me, I just haven't liked what I've seen. I don't see enough, you know, we're really playing out the season strong and hard for Minnesota right now. Otherwise, I'd say like if Vegas was playing a damn good team right now in this spot, I probably wouldn't bet them. But I think Minnesota's beatable right yeah. now for this Vegas team. I think that's the right opponent at the right time here for Vegas. All right, Calgary, Anaheim. Calgary minus 140 road favorites, six the total. This one I could only lean to Calgary. There's a long-term trend out there that road favorites uh, seeking revenge for a home loss is a favorite, which Calgary is. 
because they lost at home to Anaheim recently as a huge home favorite. Those road favorites in revenge are like 555 and 286, 66% percent long term. Okay. It's a huge, huge sample size, says Bet Calgary here. But I don't think I want it. It's back to back on the road. They're playing out the string. I mean, for me, I'd lean Calgary, but and the price is cheap, you know, minus 140 at an Anaheim team that it's, it's hard to figure them out. Uh, they've got injuries as well. Uh, they haven't been playing well. I'd lean Calgary, but I'm probably going to stay off it here. What do you think, Jimmy? I'm actually going to stay away from that, and I'm going to look at the over-under and take the under. I think this will be a snooze fest. Yeah, uh, uh, it very well could, especially Dostal is likely to be a net instead of John Gibson. Yeah, for, uh, I Anna could Ryan. see, Ian, I will say, though, just given the fact Calgary played the night before, maybe it's one of those, like, I know Alex loves to do this, the the over in the first period, but then it dies down and, you know, the legs wear out for Calgary and Anaheim maybe gets – I could if I was going to lean at who would win, I would say Anaheim maybe gets a late one, one goal, two yeah. goal win, but I, I think it stays under a total. Yeah, there, there we go. That's true. Uh, Terry is right. Silverberg, why not? He's, he announced his retirement. I was literally just veteran. thinking that, Terry. Good no. call. I was literally going to say that. That, but Well, I'm not going to say what that is, but we'll go. Final home game, you know, that's, you know, likely he's obviously not the offensive player he once was. How old is close. he? 33? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and uh, he's around yeah. that age. But it is the final home game for Anaheim because they finish at L.A. and at Vegas. You know, they'll do a tribute, I'm sure. Uh, you know, to acknowledge that he's retiring after the season. He had been with Ottawa at the beginning of his career, but most of his career had been in Anaheim. Um, so you never know. Why not feed him the puck? You know, get it to him. Try to find yeah. a goal, whoever's on his line. So I don't mind that angle at all. Jakob Silverberg in his final home game as he is retiring at the end of the season for uh, Anaheim. And I, there's someone else. Yeah, Hannafin, first game after the new contract. Yeah. It's not not a bad thing to look at. There's some situationals here, the Silverberg yeah. thing, the Hannafin thing, and, of course, we mentioned Stevenson, the new dad bump, uh, as I like to call it. So some yeah. nice little intangible player prop considerations here tonight for this uh, Friday card. Uh, great stuff. Shout out to everyone in the chat at the like button. We're sorry to have to go a little quicker, but uh, five minutes from now, I got to head out. Uh, for uh, an appointment that I got to get to. But before we do that, first, we always want to uh, make sure we let you know about patreon.com slash ice guys, $10 per month, goalie charts, totals charts, our daily sides, totals and player props, bonus content posted there and access to our exclusive live betcasts. And there's our April live betcast schedule for the rest of the month. Next week is Patreon exclusive Tuesday, April 16th, that betcast. And then we have three Stanley Cup playoff betcasts. One free-for-all Monday, April 22nd, and then two Patreon Stanley Cup playoff betcasts exclusive to Patreon Thursday, April 25th, Tuesday, April 30th, 7 p.m. Eastern start time for all those betcasts. So make sure you join us. And again, for the Patreon exclusive betcasts, sign up $10 per month, patreon.com slash Ice Guys. Make sure you get on that and check out the Ice Guys store as well and get your gear and your merch at iceguys.myspreadshop. Com. All right, we got bargain bin special of the night and best bets coming right up right after we hear from our great sponsors here, including of Beantown Friday editions of the show, Boston Hemp Inc. <laughs> All right, Boston and Pink, make sure you check them out. 20% off all orders on the website using the promo code ICEGUYS at bostonhempinc.com. All right, bargain bin special of the night. Jimmy, you mentioned earlier it was from the Carolina-St. Louis game. Uh, what do you, you got? You know what, though? I'm switching. I'm switching. I'm going with that oh. Silverberg. Give me Silverberg. 
There you know, go. it's got the retirement goal. I like it. It's a it's a it's a great way for him to go out. So I'm going with that. I'm looking at what plus five fifty over at DraftKings. So give me that, my friend. Absolutely, a plus six fifty at points bet. So make well, sure even I mean, better, goodness, even, even better. better. I mean, that's final home game too. That's not that's a that's a that's a decent angle. Again, he does not score a lot, but final home game of his career with Anaheim. Yeah, plus six fifty. What was the one you were thinking of from the St. Louis Carolina game? I was going to go. I just had a gut feeling on my man, Jordan Martinuk. Oh, there uh, you go. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. due, you know? Yeah. So I was, I had a gut feeling on that. So maybe that will be another one I touch as well. All right. There you go. So uh, Jakob Silverberg uh, with uh, his uh, bargain bin special of the night, Jimmy Murphy on that one. My bargain bin special. I like it. And I think Vegas, this is a response game for them. I like the Chandler Stevenson one plus 410. Uh, at FanDuel. Chandler Stevenson, Vegas Golden Knights. I think he's playing tonight. He looks like he's in the lineup based on all the latest lineup combinations that I see. So Chandler Stevenson, Vegas Golden Knights, plus 410 uh, for my bargain bin special uh, of the night for this Friday slate. All right, best bets. Uh, Jimmy, what do you like for best bet here tonight? I'm going on minus one and a half in the Carolina Hurricanes. All right, Carolina puck line, minus one and a half uh, for Jimmy with that one. Uh, against uh, St. Louis, and you can get that minus one and a half, plus 120 uh, with the uh, price on that. I do want to mention, actually, before I get to my best bet, i got to throw this game out at you for tomorrow. The Bruins, obviously, in Pittsburgh against the Penguins. Yep. Uh, Boston is you know, still trying to nail down the Atlantic division, so it's there is something to play for. But, man, how do you go against this magic that Pittsburgh's got going right now? They're home underdogs. Crosby's got it rolling. I'm leaning Pittsburgh, but and they did beat Tampa. They beat a really, really good Tampa team at home last Saturday. So maybe they can beat Boston. But I do know Boston's not rolling over in this game. There's still stuff to play for. Yeah. Yeah. I think Pittsburgh's got this one. I'm, I'd take Pittsburgh on the money line for sure. There you Okay. Yep. Well, I feel good. Yep. That. And just some news, too. Pat Maroon will be in the Bruins lineup most likely tomorrow. All right, so there you go. Uh, yeah, I was in Pittsburgh anyway. So uh, and, and Ian, by the way, you know, I was saying that uh, Jacob Fowler hasn't lost since the bean pot. So yeah, since February fifth, Jacob Fowler is thirteen and 1.86 goals against, a point nine three two save percentage, and two shutouts over that span. Whew. Wow. Yeah, that's. I, I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah, no doubt. I would stay away from the over. To, well, I guess maybe my prediction wouldn't be good then. If, uh, but the, that means, just means BC is going to have to start. stay with. I would take team total under for Denver goals. All right, there you go. Team total under for Denver goals for uh, there Jimmy. You there you go. That's that's a, w- a way to approach it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you could bet against Denver and not have to lay minus two eighty. You know, mm-hmm. which is the money line on uh, Boston College uh, in that game uh, tomorrow. All right, my best bet. Okay, I got this over uh, five and a half at um, earlier in this morning. It moved since then. It's up to six. We'll have to go with that instead. Let's go Nashville, Chicago, uh, over six, minus 115. We cashed a best bet winner with the over in Chicago's last game against St. Louis. We'll go back to that same well here tonight. Predators, Blackhawks, uh, over six, uh, minus 115. Uh, for my best bet here for this Friday NHL card. Uh, That'll wrap it up. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms. For Jimmy Murphy, I'm Ian Cameron. Check him out on the eye test at the top of the hour with Jimmy Murphy, and we'll see you with Pierre Maguire, and we'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the Ice Guys. (laughs) 